In this video, I wanted to talk about disease prevalence and how that relates to radiology. A lot of the first articles in the radiology literature about COVID-19 have come out of Wuhan, China, which is the epicenter of the global pandemic. Early publication of these articles is instrumental in educating the radiology community about the appearance of the disease, but it's important to look at the numbers and ask yourself, how can I apply this to my patient population? This article from Radiology, which was published February 26, 2020, looked at the radiologic appearance of 1,014 cases of suspected coronavirus. Let's dive into this article a little bit and see what the numbers show. In this study, they looked at 1,014 cases of suspected COVID based on certain symptoms. As the reference standard, they used reverse transcription polymerase chain reaction, or RT-PCR, to determine positivity or negativity for COVID-19. Based on that data, they were able to calculate the sensitivity and specificity of CT for the detection of COVID-19, and they were also able to test positive predictive value and negative predictive value. But let's see how they got to these numbers. So here are the numbers that they got in this study. They had 1,014 patients, 601 tested positive on PCR, and 413 tested negative on PCR. Okay, so now we can look at how many of those patients were positive and negative by CT. So of the patients who had COVID-19, 580 were positive by CT, and 21 were negative by CT. And of the healthy patients, we had 308 that had a positive CT and 105 that had a negative CT. Okay, so from this, now we can calculate sensitivity, specificity, and predictive value. So remember that to calculate sensitivity, we have to take the number of cases that were positive for the test that we want to look at, and then divide that by the total number of positive cases. So 580 divided by 601, and that is sensitivity, okay? And that comes out to about 97%, okay? For specificity, we want to look at the total number of negative cases for the test we were looking at. 105 CTs were negative, and 413 of those were actually healthy, so the Math on this is 105 divided by 413, and that comes out to about 25% for specificity. For predictive value, those numbers go across this way on this table. So to calculate the positive predictive value, which is the number of patients who actually had the disease that we thought had the disease based on the test we're looking at. So in other words, we want to add up the total number of positives, which comes out to 888. And how many, of patient, how many patients actually had the disease of those 888 patients? So we're only looking at this number here, 580. So 580 divided by 888, this is the positive predictive value, and that comes out to 65%. The negative predictive value is, of the patients who we thought were negative, what percentage of those actually were negative? So that's this number divided by the sum of these two numbers. So negative predictive value. So how many patients did we call negative total? And that's 105 plus 21, so that's 126. And of those patients, how many were actually negative? 105. So the negative predictive value of this test is 83%. Okay, so this is all well and good, but remember that these numbers come from Wuhan, China, where the pretest probability of having the disease was already very high because the prevalence of the disease in the population was high. So let's talk about another community using these same sensitivity and specificity and apply it to our own community here. I pulled up the Illinois Department of Public Health website because I live in Chicago, and as of today, which is March 15th, 2020, we have 64 positive confirmed cases based on PCR, we have 445 negative cases, and we have pending 195 cases. Okay, so now that we know the sensitivity and specificity of CT for COVID based on the prior study from China, 
we can plug in these numbers to determine the predictive value of the test in our patient population. So based on this current public health data, let's work backwards to fill in this chart. So we have 64 patients who are positive. We have 449 patients who are negative. We know that the sensitivity of CT for COVID-19 is 97%, and the specificity is about 25%. So let's fill in this chart. So 97% sensitivity for a patient population of 64 who have the disease comes out to 62 patients will test positive on CT. Two patients will test negative. And for a specificity of 25%, we will have 113 patients who have a negative CT and 336 patients who will have a positive CT. So what does the predictive value come out to? Let's look at positive predictive value first. So remember that to calculate positive predictive value, we want to take the total number of cases that we called positive by CT, so this number here, and add them together, and that comes out to 398. Of that 398, how many were actually positive? So that's 62. So our positive predictive value here is only 16%, meaning that 16% of patients who we call positive by CT will actually be positive when you do the PCR test. Okay, another way to look at positive predictive value is to take one minus that number. So one minus positive predictive value, and in this case it's 84%. So 84% of patients who we call positive by CT will go on to have a negative PCR. Okay, and negative predictive value so in this case, we want to add up 113 plus 2, and that comes out to 115. And how many of those were actually negative? 113. And the negative predictive value goes up to 98%. Okay, so it goes up from 98%, and if you remember on the study in China, it was 83%. Okay, so the reason why I wanted to do this is that it's important to look at these studies coming out of um, Wuhan, China, and other epicenters and apply it to our, your own patient population. Okay, and another thing to keep in mind is that this is just a snapshot in time. So these numbers here, this 64 number and this 449 number, is the data that we have coming out from March 15th. You know, one week from now or one month from now, we may have a whole different set of circumstances where a number of positive patients come through and then our positive predictive value will go up and our negative predictive value will go down, okay? But it's important to do this exercise to realize, to get a sense of what your numbers might actually be in your community. Okay, that's all I have for this video. Um, if you want to add something or have a question or make a point, please do so in the comments below and I'll try to get to it. Thanks.